It's 2022 and Jamie Winkup will be taking over the leadership at AAA Race Engineering where he's won all seven of his drivers' championships in the in the Repco Supercars Championship. And so this video is about reflecting on the legacy but also how we should appreciate these incredible drivers when they come through and then they win multiple championships, lots of races, then they move on, they go somewhere else and then we, we think that somebody else has to step up to that level but it just might not happen we had scott mclaughlin for that scott mclaughlin came through he was incredible he did a great job but he took over from when where wing cup won his last championship in 2017 and that was the first full season of supercars that i watched was the incredible championship battle between triple eight and djr team penske 2017 was maybe the first year that people started saying that jamie wing cup's not not so good anymore Shane Van Gisbergen is the future of Triple Eight. He's the he's gonna he's gonna be smashing Wink up every year, and that's just not true. That's not what happened. In 2017, Van Gisbergen made quite a few mistakes. He probably should have been should have done better than Jamie, but he didn't. And Jamie held on, did the best he can every race. They managed to get the cars out at Bathurst after he. He had an engine failure and they fixed it. They got it started up again somehow. I think he was 20 laps down. And he finished 22nd or something in the race. And that helped him get a few more points to keep him up there. And then, of course, Newcastle happened. DJR Saturday, Triple Eight Sunday. It was a result that couldn't have been more shocking. Jamie was the 2017 champion. And he probably shouldn't have been. He would think it was a... What did they say? He was... 80 points down on Scott McLaughlin heading into that final race and then McLaughlin had such a shocking race that Wing Cup managed to win the championship so that's a, that's a case of you just keep trying get there to the end and anything can happen so we went into 2018 with number one on the door which was great as far as I'm concerned that was a great thing to see was uh, seeing number one on the door. It didn't happen in 2017 because Shane Van Gisbergen didn't want to wear it. He wanted to keep his number and that's fine, that's up to him, but only one out of the, the whole field gets to have the number one and that's a defending champion. Marcus Ambrose wore it, Mark Scaife wore it, there's plenty of great drivers of wore it and Wink Up was one of those drivers who wore it that many times. He had a he had a solid year, he actually led the championship that year after Tasmania. So Phillip Island race one, he had the number one, and it, had, it was red as well. And so that was important for him, and he kept doing a great job. But towards the end of the year, Shane Van Gisbergen kept on pushing hard, and I think from Darwin onwards, he was challenging Scott McLaughlin for the lead of the championship and pushed him all the way to the end. But McLaughlin did such a good job, he managed to win the title. But Wing Cup was still in the hunt I think up until Townsville after Townsville they said it's going to be a bit too hard for him so 2019 comes along um, obviously the Mustangs were way better than the Commodores that year which was disappointing we wanted to see something like the how competitive it was in 2017 but it didn't really happen and AAA didn't win any races until later on in the year uh, Simmons Plains I think was the first Holden victory and Jamie kept doing the best that he could podiums kept being in the hunt and you just keep keep plucking away like he did in 2017 and get the points but obviously they had the disadvantage the parity war the all of that was going on um, but when you're on one of the teams that's banging on the doors of the regulators and saying you need to make this fair it's a good spot to be in he did a good job held on finished third in the championship Fabian Coulthard didn't manage to beat him so you can say that DJR had not as equal, not as matched cars, or maybe it was just that um, DJR wasn't as good as people thought they were, because McLaughlin was making them look so good. There's a lot to there's a lot to say and not a lot to know. 2020 comes along, they fixed the parody. They did a whole bunch of stuff in the in the off season. Wing Cup comes in and wins the first race of the year. And that was the last time that he, he was leading the championship was he had the coloured number 88 in race two at Adelaide. 
when I was there. And that was a that was special. I thought that was pretty cool to see Jamie Winkup have another go, try and win the championship. And he was in he was in the hunt right up until that last round at Tail and Bend, which I was there for as well. Um, he just had a shocking last round, a shocking round before Bathurst, and he wasn't going to be able to win the championship after that. And then going you know, to Bathurst, crash out. He was still winning races that year. He was still in with a shot the whole year, and it was a it was a it was a good year for him. Then twenty twenty one, obviously Shane dominated, and Jamie didn't win as many races as uh, Cameron Waters or Chas Mostert. So you could say that maybe it was the right call for Jamie to say this is my last year. He still did better than Chaz and Cam, but maybe he was just, it's just because he was in a better team. Still, it was the consistency that got him second, and this year he'll be the managing director and team principal at Triple Eight. I think it's just important to acknowledge how successful he was in his career and how special he was for the sport as a full-time driver and uh, how interesting it will be to see him uh, in pit lane on race weekends talking to to journalists all day pretty much and then obviously talking to the management in Triple Eight, Mark Dutton and the engineers, things like that, the drivers, just like Roland Dane's been doing for the last, uh, what, 18 years. It's a long time. And so it'll be interesting to see if Jamie can do that for, for that long. And I certainly hope that I'll still be watching in 18 years. So, and that'll be, what, 2040? That'll be, that's a long time away. I think Jamie went out in the best way that could possibly uh, could possibly have happened in the same way that Craig Lowndes went off but he had a more celebrated retirement period just like Peter Brock did on top of the cars waving yes it's all amazing I'm going to be going I'm not going to be in the car next year stuff like that uh, and Jamie didn't want to do that Jamie was focusing on having another crack at the championship because that was that was what he kept saying over the last few years. Um, I was there walking behind him in 2020, going over the bridge. Uh, I think someone asked him, so also congratulations for get it for extending the contract for another year. And uh, yeah, he pretty much said that he was extending it, have another go next year as well. Um, and obviously, challenge for the championship 2020. And you're finishing second to the guy who won the most races in 2021. Shane was unbeatable. Did a brilliant job. And Jamie... Jamie won his last race at uh, Sydney Motorsport Park. That was his last full-time race win. He may be a co-driver this year, but he may not as well. He says that it will depend on um, how he finds things as the managing director and team principal. Key things to find in the stats as well for, for Jamie the 2021 season one of two in his entire career that he won only two races the other being 2006 his first for triple eight where he obviously won the Adelaide 500 and Bathurst um he didn't win Bathurst in 2021 but he did a very good job I think he finished what fourth did a really good job there not as many pole positions as maybe he could have gotten in 2021, but that's how you know it's the, that's how you know it's time to call an end to it. Um, but he did have a lot of front rows that he didn't have in 2020 when he actually was contending for the title, and 2019 as well, when well that might have been a tougher year, but he still won more races and got more pole positions. I can't think of another driver who went out as gracefully as that. Apart from McLaughlin obviously left, but you could have said that's premature. He could have easily stayed in supercars and won not only the 2021 championship, but he probably would have won the 2022 championship as well. He was that good, but he was that good that he wants to leave. Like Marcus Ambrose. Um, but obviously that last race win was, um, was a bad day for Shane. 
and a very good day for Jamie and it, it was a wet race as well which is not an easy race to win especially if you're in the lead and you got someone on your hammer the whole time and he just held on and he did a really good job and he won and that was also the race that Chaz Mostert was flying through the field did a great job finished third that's a result that you can't that you can't take away from him and that was obviously deserved Jamie always said he doesn't want to go past his use by date. He doesn't want to be racing into his 40s, and he did that. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. Retired the first year there. Maybe he could have done a bit that someone else could have done better in that car. But 2021 was perhaps most similar to the 2017 season where he didn't have the best start of the year. But he kept plucking away, getting podiums, uh, getting lots of points and then get, getting the results that uh, the team won the team's championship and the driver's championship. It just wasn't him that won it. And I think a big problem when a driver is so successful as Jamie Winkup, and it, it was the same with Scott McLaughlin as well, when the same driver keeps on winning most of the races, you get tired of seeing him winning and you don't want to see him win anymore. And that happened with Winkup, except Winkup won seven championships he kept winning for years until 2017 was the first year that he actually struggled to win as many races whereas in 2016 he was still winning heaps he was a serious challenger for the title but Van Gisbergen did it there hasn't been a five time champion that finished his career challenging for the championship even Pete Gagan in 1970 he, I think he won a race but that was about it Everyone else was beating him. Dick Johnson went on another ten years after his last championship, but he wasn't he wasn't a contender in nineteen ninety nine. Mark Scaife had his own issues um running the Holden Racing team. So he wasn't able to contend. It's just something that we might not see again for a long, long time. So we're going to be happy about it and we're going to be happy that he loved the sport that much to stay around people were talking about him going overseas in what 2011 saying he's gonna he, he's so good he's gonna go overseas he's gonna be in formula one and someone like scott mclaughlin did that ambrose did that i think shane man is is gonna stay around a long time but whether he wins another five championships or whether he even wins another three is still going to be up in the air and it's still going to depend on what the competition's like whether another driver like Scott McLaughlin comes along and just steals the show and I'm definitely looking forward to reading Jamie Winkow's book because it's if, what he managed to do to come out of getting dumped by Gary Rogers in, at the end of 2003 and get a full-time drive and a half-decent car and get into a team that was contending for the championship prove that he deserved it and then go on to win seven championships like there's it just do, it doesn't happen so that's all I got to say about that let me know what you think about all of that maybe you saw a few races that Jamie did and uh, maybe you think there's another driver who'll be just as good as Jamie Winkup maybe Brock Feeney who knows maybe Shane Van Gisbergen who knows um, and that's the great thing about motor racing is that it stays up in the air until it's written down as something that actually happened so see you next time bye bye